Well, Visual Asset News, my name is Rob. Today I want to talk to you about is what I am buying uh, every single day as far as crypto and what I am buying every week. And the reason for this is I want to make things crystal clear because I've been pretty bearish on this channel, but I'm going to talk about uh, the bearish side. I need to talk to you about the bullish side and as to why in, in the long term I am incredibly bullish. Also, I want to talk to you about not just what I'm buying, but why I am buying it uh, in this specific fashion. I think the why is more important than the what. And lastly, we're going to talk about why now is the time, uh, in my personal opinion, for me to buy because I see some pretty big dangers uh, ahead. So the first things first is uh, what crypto I'm buying. And this should be uh, no shock to anyone. I am buying uh, Bitcoin uh, every single day. And what I want to do is I want to show you just uh, some past examples. And what we're using here is dca-cc.com. Links in the description. You can do this yourself and just check it out. I want to make this very simple. And we're going to go back all the way to 2018. I'm going to say that I'm going to buy $100 per week of Bitcoin starting on 2018 and ending in uh, 2022 in December. Now, why do I talk about 2018? It's because uh, if you've watched the channel, I'm a big believer uh, and of course, the four-year cycles. And of course, everything starts with a halving, which the first one was in 2012. Then a year after, we usually get an all-time high, then a dip and a reset. Same thing happened in 2016. We had a halving, all-time high, a dip and a reset. And then we just had, another, again, in 2020, we had a Bitcoin halving. Then we hit the all-time high in 2021. Now we're going through a dip. 15.7 was the lowest. Right now, it is December 29th, 2022. I don't see it's going to go much lower than 15.7 this year. And then maybe we'll see uh, more things happening uh, in 2023. And then I'll just repeat again and so on and so forth. But now, of course, when we talk about these things, past performance doesn't indicate future results. But if we take a look at where we've been, we can kind of take a look at where we're potentially going. So take this with a grain of salt. But if we do $100 per week and start in 2018, which would be uh, after the all-time high in 2017, 2018, we had that big dip and a reset. If I would put $100 per week into Bitcoin, you can just see right here that I'd be eating it. I'd be uh, eating crow for quite some time. You can see the total investment here is $200 on the second week. Uh, the balance in fiat is $212. You can see that actually my investment uh, is not doing so good for quite some time. And actually, I'll be underwater for... <laughs> for quite a quite a bit of time. Why is that important? It's because as time goes on, things work out. But you can just see here that throughout the whole year of 2018, maybe not a good idea to invest, but if I just had some extra cash laying around, sure enough. And I would be underwater until roughly 2019. And then of course, as time goes on, of course, those those past buying opportunities at 3,000 Bitcoin or 4,000 Bitcoin or 5,000 per Bitcoin would have paid off handsomely if I would have timed it perfectly. The total investment would have been 20000 and I would have had a balance of $146,000, which is roughly a 7x. Now, same thing happens here. What if I would have just started in 2019 and just said, okay, I'm a dollar cost average, 100 bucks starting on January 1st, 2019. Well, the same thing. I'd still be underwater, but it would have taken me a lot less time to get into it and actually have been uh, positive in that same year. However, over here, if we take a look at the gains, I would have invested 15000 and had $100,000 roughly, which I got to tell you, in my personal opinion, that would have been a better option for me because I would have still be roughly at a 7x. So if we take a look back, uh, 2019 would be two years after the all-time high. 2023 will be two years after the all-time high of Bitcoin in 2021. So I think that might be a better time frame. Now let's take a look here and just see, well, well, Rob, what if, I don't know, what if I just would have invested in to the bull run in, uh, in 20 and, or, or a year before in 2020. So if we would have done that, 2020 would have looked something like this. Wouldn't have been too great. I don't really see it. 9,800. So the deeper the bear market that I invest into, that's where all the money's made, the more gains I have later on. And then of course, if I would have done in the bull market, bull market started in 2021, you can see that I wouldn't have done so hot, quite honestly. I would have done okay, I would have invested $4,600 and would have had a whopping 
6,785. So again, not even a not even a 2x, which is pretty sad. Now, that's just Bitcoin. And that's why I buy Bitcoin every single day. I think it'll be pretty do pretty well. And we're going to talk a look at why. But let's just take a look at of Ethereum. So if I were to put $100 weekly for Ethereum, again in 2018, started over here and uh, just in that every single week for Ethereum by 2021, I would have put in 20,000 and got 329,000. So as we go down the list, as far as altcoins, you can see that there's a, a, a much bigger gain here uh, than what it was before. So looking at what, 14, 16 X, I'm around there. Ethereum, let's say we started in 2019 and done the same thing. Well, this one, but it's still been pretty good. And again, that's why I still think if we're looking for risk to reward, I think in uh, 2023, if we're looking at the four-year cycles, still a pretty good time. And then, of course, Ethereum, if we did it in uh, 2020, we would have had eh, about a 10x, which is still pretty good. And if we would have done it in the uh, bull market in 2021, you can still see that we wouldn't have done much. So that's, again, why I say if we're going to invest, I personally believe it's best to invest in the bear market when nobody wants to invest and it is super duper boring. And we talk about that here. When things are boring, nobody wants to invest and chopping sideways. That's when you, that's when I, dollar cost average. You can do whatever you want to, not your dad, but uh, that is what has worked for me. So then if we take a look at that. Here are the cryptos that I am buying every single week. And I know that there's difference of opinions here about how we can we can still fall and I agree we still could fall but I'm buying Polygon, Chainlink, Ethereum, Algorand, Cosmos and Cardano every single week on different days dollar cost averaging will they go down probably they probably will go down and I'm okay with that because if we take a look at the rules underneath me I just have to assume that I am investing what I can afford to lose it's all gone Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave any exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. We'll talk about that in a second. So that's what I am buying right now every single week. And again, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. And talking about that, this is the thing. I still believe we're going to go lower. So why don't I just hang on? I'll tell you in a second. So if we take a look at the Bitcoin price from the four-year cycles, Cycle one from the top of 2013 down to the bottom of 2015, that was an 85% drop. Cycle two, 2016 and 2019, it was an 84% drop. Cycle three, we thought the bottom was in June and everybody was blasting about how they were right and how they knew it was June and they were wrong. And actually the bottom so far is the 9th of November at 15.7. That was a 77% drop. That's why I don't believe anybody. And that's why I continue to dollar cost average because I don't know who's right. And I can't time the markets, but I will do this. See this thing called dynamic DCA. I am not dollar cost averaging as much as I used to because I'm unsure. However, what I like to do is just take a look at it and go, okay, if I'm gonna buy, I don't know, $40 of, of Bitcoin every single day, let's just say for example, then once we start to hit into the $15,000 level of, of Bitcoin and below, I will increase that by 10%. So then every, every single day, I will buy 44. I'll just round up 45 bucks. And then when it goes to $14,000, that's another $1,000 drop. I will increase by 10% again, 13,000, 10%, 12,000, 10 more percent, 11,000, and so on and so forth. And I dynamic DCA down because the risk is not as high because things are just kind of collapsing. It's a counterintuitive way to think, but I think that that's what will happen moving forward. And also we need to take a look at some things we've been talking about as far as 10 year bear markets. Now we've talked about this, um, not extensively, but a couple of times here and there. We've had Jordan Weir's on and we've talked about 10 year uh, bear markets uh, historically in the housing market and also historically in the S&P 500. This is looking at the S&P 500 over uh, the last 100 years or so back from uh, 1929. And one thing that we've been talking about is what Stanley Druckenmiller talked about, one of the investing legends. He said, look, he goes, in the 1960s, we were, we never, we didn't hit our all time high for 10 years. And he said, in 1968, we're looking at 870, 870 for the S&P 500. And look how long it took 
to get back to 870 in the S&P 500. It actually took quite some time. And if we just keep looking at it, 870 was roughly around, oh no, here, 1992. So if you want to talk about getting back to the original levels, that's how long it took for the all-time highs. However, that was quite a bit of time, right? But look at this one. In 1929, the Great Depression, to get up to 519, you know how long it took? All the way over here, 1956. That's 30 years. And then also take a look at this in the S&P 500, which no one talks about this. I don't know why. It's right in front of our faces. In 2000, to get back up to the all-time high of 2466, you know how long it took? 2466. It took you to 2014. 2013, no, 2014, to get you all the way back. That's 14 years to get you all, all the way back to this. And I don't know if you, if you remember 2000s, but I had no problems making money back then as far as a business owner, a small business, the different things that I started up with. So even the S&P 500 may tank and we have problems here. Doesn't mean that the rest of the markets will. However, we are in lockstep right now. That's what it is. But I want you to focus on a couple of things. First of all, even though we don't hit the all-time highs, there's still gains to be had. And that's just to say that's what's happening. But if you can go down here, buy down here, look at this one. In 1929, not to get the all-time highs. You were looking at 96 if you would have bought in 32. And look over here, 1936, seemed to be doing pretty good. The same thing over here in 2000 and so on and so forth. So when I talk about a 10-year bear market, it doesn't mean there's not opportunities. There's huge opportunities. And that will get to a couple of things of uh, when I'm going to personally sell. There's a website, Dan Teaches Crypto. We're just going to log in real quick. Of course, it's 100% free, very simple to use. I put all my best information here. It only costs you an email to sign up. I don't even spam you. I make this free so you can learn from it. Under uh, Module 3, Investing, I've got some pretty in-depth videos here about risk, why a dollar cost average, for your cycles, but this one, 2025 Bull Run Exit Strategy. And of course, we talk about this, and of course, when I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto, that's to, that's to assume that we go into 2025, like we talked about over here, that's to assume that we hit an all-time high in 2025. But what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? What if we extend out because of this new paradigm shift in the global economy? Could you handle it if you were able to accumulate in 2026? And maybe 2027 is the new all-time highs or whenever it is. Again, think back so we took a look at over here for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the longer that things took, just the better off it was actually uh, moving forward. So again, take a look at that video. Also, when I talk about, and it's right below me, taking profits, there's an app I use. I have no affiliate link with this. It's called Delta, delta.app. I'll put a link in the description. It's not affiliate. They didn't pay me or nothing like that but it's very simple because it's free and you can plug in your information here and it can tell you like on one day, three day or one week, how much you are up or down on your crypto. So as time goes on, if you want to take, take profits, you're like, well, how much should I take? Well, it's going to be right there and it makes things super simple. I think that's the, the best way for some people. I, you can do whatever you want to do, but this then gets down to the most important question. Why? Why do I continue to buy? And it goes like this. Very simply, our market cap, again, December 29, 2022, is 831 billion. We used to be at $3 trillion. That is paltry. That is nothing. Apple has more of a market cap than the entire crypto market put together. And when I take a look at that and go, okay, if we take a look at how much funds are floating around or money that's floating around in the world, this is the stock market. And roughly, this is in 2020, so there's more there. Let's just say 100 trillion. If we take 1% of 100 trillion from the stock market, where people are like, you know what? I'm kind of concerned because Stanley Druckenmiller and a bunch of smart people are talking about how we're going to be in a 10 year bear market. Maybe I want to see something a little more risky that could give me better returns and just dabble in there. I'm going to take 1% of my portfolio. Let's say everybody does that. 1% of 100 trillion. Let me do some quick math. Oh, yeah, it's about 1 trillion. So you take 1 trillion from the stock market. Gold is roughly 12 trillion. Let's just say we take 500 billion from that. People are like, you know what? Gold's not really doing too much. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they diversify like people are talking about. Here's the money supply, 100 trillion. It's more now. Let's say 1% goes into crypto. Global debt, 253 trillion. Let's just take, I don't know, 
other 1% of that. Uh, we're doing pretty good as far as like two and a half trillion or somewhere around there. Global real estate, let's say people like, you know what? Just like what Jordan Weiss was talking about, maybe there's not a, a good plan for real estate. Maybe we're going to see more of a collapse. Maybe I should diversify a little bit more. Maybe get into crypto. Maybe we'll take, I don't know, 1% of that. And then maybe the global wealth that's at 300 and something trillion dollars. Or maybe we go into the derivatives market, which is, oh, you know, the little stuff like futures, forwards, options, warrant swaps, which is one quadrillion. We take one to two percent of that. What do we got? We got a heck of a lot more than three trillion dollars. And that's where the magic is. Now, could this happen? No idea. But I can tell you right now, I think there's going to be more of a fireworks later on. And then lastly, and this is the, the thing that I get, we, we heard from Larry Fink. He talked about tokenization as the future. And then people would say, but Rob, you don't understand. When Larry Fink talks about that, he's talking about he's going to have his own private blockchain. Could. I think it's a huge mistake. I'm going to tell you why. Because big businesses, they don't have time, resources, management just to spin up their own blockchain. They could. I mean, they definitely could. But here's an example. Take a look at Facebook. Facebook, back in the day, this is we're looking at 2005, 2006. When they first started up, they knew to get to the finish line faster, they're just going to start buying everything up. It's a lot easier than creating your own. And they could create their own. I can tell you right now, this Fright Friend Feed or whatever the heck this was, Parakey, Connect You, they could have just made this. Or they could have just let these guys collapse. But they're like, no, 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 we're going to buy you 15, 15 million. And what I want you to notice is as time goes on, how much they are spending on buying up other things or building on top of those things. Here's 2011, $50 billion. They bought Snapdo, Datum, so I don't know what this stuff is. Now, 83 billion, they bought this thing called Instagram. Don't you think they could have made a pretty easy way of, of an Instagram, which is essentially Facebook anyhow with a bunch of pictures and things like that? And they said, yeah, we could just do that. No, they bought it because they want to be the bigger ones. Acrylic, Threbby, Karma, Face, Onovo, Onyx. But look at the prices. In 2013, they spent 75 billion, 2014, 145 billion, 2016, 275 billion, 2018, 520 billion, and so on and so forth. So when we talk about how like these banks are going to do their own private blockchain and just build it all up and get all they could do that. But I think the faster, better, easier option is just to build on top of other existing blockchains or just buy something up and do it that way, which would be a public blockchain. So that is why I continue to buy. And this comes down to why I think now is the best time or is the time because I see some dangers ahead. Look, things aren't getting easier out there, but I think things are going to accelerate, especially with AI and AI and robots. And when people talk about this, they're like, ah, they'll never take my job. Just take a look at something like this. This would be like in a warehouse. If you're looking, working at a warehouse, this is the future for you, unfortunately. Here's some crazy robot doing God knows what and, uh, <laughs> and you know, picking off, and, oh yeah, uh, re recyclables and things like that. And then I'll link this video uh, as well. Again, all these things just are t eating up your job. And not only is stuff like that, but we can also see like, AI as far as in the creative side. Chat, GPT. Everybody's been talking about this. I want to show you something. If you're a creative person, this might scare you or it might incentivize you and uh, make you say, well, I can supercharge things. I just put in here, write a blog post in a friendly voice on decentralized public blockchains versus private bank blockchains, which we were just talking about. I'm going to click go. Now watch this. Hello, everyone. I want to talk about doing something. And I didn't think that it could be this accurate. But here it talks about, in real time, a blog post, which you could put this into another program, run it through a voice synthesizer, and then put backgrounds of videos and become an influencer on YouTube. Just saying, my job's at, uh, at risk as well. Thankfully, I have other things in real estate and stuff like that. But you can just see pretty much how accurate it actually is. Private blockchains are typically permission systems, only open when I've done two blockchains. One major difference in terms of accessibility, you know, the key difference in terms of security. Again, it just goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop there. How about this? You know, everybody's talking about learn to code, learn to code, learn to code, learn to code. I just said this, write a code in HTML for a travel website. 
And sure, here's some sample HTML code for a travel website. Now, again, this is just an HTML. I'm pretty sure it can do it in other languages. And I'm pretty sure it's not 100% accurate. But how much time would this take, especially if you're a small business owner and don't want to pay somebody to do something like this? Just say, create my website. Here we go. And not only that, for different products that are out there. And then for more creative people, take a look at this. I put in there, this one's called crayon.com, C-R-A-I-Y-O-N. I said, put a YouTube thumbnail of Bitcoin eating the world. Not too great, but this is the first iteration. And I did it over here as well, Bitcoin in the world, and just spun up stuff like this. And there's a ton more coming. So when I talk about now is a time, what I'm talking about is this is the time to start to invest and get into things that can pay off later for future generations. Me personally, I like real estate because as much AI comes about, people are still going to need a place to live, a place to hopefully work, and just a place to, to set up camp. Also, for crypto and digital assets, as time moves on, I just give you a pretty much of an idea of where things are potentially going. Does that mean that's what it's going to be? No. But when we take a look at the things that are AI, let's say that jobs get stolen like that. Where are you left with now? So I think it's a good idea to take a look at the things that you can invest into now and move forward. But again, I could be wrong. Anyhow, that's it for today's video. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We talk about most of the news every day, but we throw in different videos like this just to show people where uh, my mind is at. That is it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.